In this next video, we will create the strip layout. Select create a strip layout and we'll enter a file name. Let's call it strip assembly. And then we'll enter a project name. You can either enter in a prefix or a suffix. I'll enter a prefix in. And whatever we enter in here for a project name gets added. This automatically gets added to the front of the file name of every file in this assembly. And I'll go into configuration at station. And this is where we can rough out the stations of the strip. You can see it just roughed everything in here, but we can also add idles. And I'll say I want to add an idle behind here. And say I want six idles after this station. Six, hit OK, just added those idles. Of course, we can always add or remove stations at any time once the strip is created. I'll select OK. And make sure I'm feeding right to left. Yep, that's checked. And I'll select Save. Starts creating the different parts and assembling or creating the assembly. And our strip assembly is created. By default, it'll give you two times stock thickness scrap between the parts and one time stock thickness scrap in the front and in the back. That's just what it starts out with and we can change it from there. So say I come down here and I want to adjust the space between the parts. I'll say I want 075 behind between the parts. And then I can come up here and fine tune the step or the progression. Let's say I want uh, 0.6 there. And then the space between the parts updates. And then I can do the same thing down here. It's fixed value from the from the top and the, from the bottom of the strip. Uh, first, what I'm going to do is uh, say I want to rotate the part 180 degrees. Come up here. Type in 180. And you can see we get a preview here. If I want to apply those changes, I just hit, hit the apply, and that change is forced throughout the strip assembly. Now I can come down here and say I want to change the fixed value from, from the, the uh, bottom of the strip. Say I want 375 there. Oop, that was my strip width. I want this set to independent so I can inde have independent values not balanced on the strip width. And from the bottom of the strip, I want 0.375. From the top of the strip, I want 60 thousandths. But I can come up here for the strip width and type in a nice rounded number, 0.400. But now these values have changed. Well, I can still come down here, type in 0.375, and now this value adjusted and maintained the 0.400 strip width. And I'll apply that. There, that just adjusted there throughout the strip. And if I wanted to, I can also say, oh, say I want, I mean, it's just a visual thing. I could leave it where it is, but let's say I want this part centered on the station. I can come up here for the X value and type in 0.300. And then uh, I can start creating some of the punches. So I'll go to the punch tab and I'll select add a cutting punch. And I'll start out by uh, creating a pilot. So I'll just 
draw in a pilot, a circle, I mean, and dimension it. I'll say uh, 0 0.095. Then, LogoPress has a function called convert for construction. And say I want to convert this edge as construction geometry and place the center line from the midpoint of that to the center of that circle. And then put a vertical relation there and then dimension this value. Exit sketch. It's our pilot hole and you can see the preview of the cuts. If I wanted to, I could move this to a different station if I wanted to, but I'll leave it in station two. And I'll create another cutting punch. Add another cutting punch. And I'll come over here. This is where we're coining in these grippers. So I will create this punch over here. And all I need to do is draw in a corner rectangle in the general area. And then LogoPress has a function called search the punch outline. And all the blank sketch entities within that enclosed shape will automatically, automatically get converted. And anything I don't want, I can always delete. And then I can just drag these lines over. And I got an enclosed shape. Fully defined, so I can exit the sketch, and there's another cutting punch. And you'll see this little red arrow. This red arrow is giving us the center of force for the punches that are currently in the strip. And as I add more punches or move punches to different stations, this center of force arrow will move. You can see the red red previews here. Once I hit apply, that's when the cuts are made. If I want to create another cutting punch, just go add another cutting punch, and it creates another part file, inserts it into the assembly, and then puts me into a sketch within that part file and makes me normal to that sketch. So it does a lot of stuff by clicking on that one icon. And uh, let's see, I'm going to create another punch right here. I'll draw on another rectangle. In the general area. And then I'll go to Logo Press Sketch, search the punch outline, converts and trims. Then uh, I'll draw in a center line. From the midpoint of here up to the midpoint of here and make this vertical just to keep it balanced side to side and I'll place in some dimensions here and a vertical dimension it's a bit much And I'm not going to bother with uh, fillets or punch mismatches. LogoPress does have a function for put in punch mismatches, but I'll leave it blank. I'm just putting in the punches to gut the material away for deforming. Exit the sketch. There's another cutting punch. And I'll go, let's see, add another cutting punch. Again, it inserts another part file and puts me into another sketch, normal to. And I'll draw this in right here. Of course, I could draw it in any station. It will just simply, uh, we can move it later on. Search the punch outline. Place in some dimensions. Go 
Again, I'm not going to bother with mismatches or radiuses at this point. Just fully defining the sketch and exit the sketch and the punch is created. Create one more punch. Add a cutting punch again. And draw in a rectangle. Something like this. Search the punch outline. And the I'll just place, oh, I will convert this line right here for construction. So selected, convert as construction geometry, and I'll just place dimensions on here. Drag this up. Exit the sketch. And then looking at it, you can see our center of force arrow is moving around. And if I look, oh, that's not where I wanted it. I can always, I have that punch selected. I just move it over with the arrow. I'm going to move it to whatever station I'd like. Okay, I'll hit apply to apply the cuts. See the center of force arrow just slid over. And that will be it for this video.